Welcome to the Capital Dance Studios. Two old friends of mine that I haven't seen in a very, very long time. Skepta and Jammer. Studio crew, make some noise! Woo! Yeah. Jammer, how are you? I'm there, Jammer, man. I'm good, I'm good, good. In good spirits, everything is good right now. Everything seems to be really good right now in your world. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy as well to link you here on, on the flip side as well. Do you get what I'm saying? So. Yep. Jam and jam, link back up. You get me, big skeppy. <laughs> you get me, we're taking turns. <laughs> Mad. 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 But it's time. You oh, know no. what? You know what, what? You know when it's time, don't you? You know when it's time where you just need to have a change. You need to do something different. You need to listen to that creative part of your soul that says it's time. Yeah. Um. Coming out of lockdown was a bit of a weird one for everyone. You know. Um. Creatively. I feel like, yeah, rap music is, was got into a bit of a weird space because it's a genre that's really about the soul. Mm. And now we're in a, like, we're in a tech, we're in a tech space, you know, and a lot of stuff is working off numbers. So it was good to just have a break of that and just get back to the sounds, you know, the sounds, the modulations, the filters, all of that fun stuff. The frequencies. Because yeah. that's the thing, we, 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 we deal with frequencies. So when you're putting out positive frequencies, positive frequencies will come back to you. Yeah. And speaking of positive frequencies, this new song. Yeah. <sighs> Can't play myself. Tribute to Amy. Come on, it's our Jam Hot record this week. Oh, is it? Is yeah? It? Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> it's a Bastio yeah, Po season. Yeah, man. Yeah. Nah, but it's a jam. big deal to get an Amy Winehouse sample cleared. You're the first people ever to be able to clear Amy Winehouse. How does that feel to know that? It's crazy. It's crazy. Like, it's, it's slowly starting to, you know what I'm saying, become reality, but it's that's all I can say. It's crazy because, like I said before, like initially when we first did it, it was literally a tribute to Amy at Coco mm -hmm. because we had a show there. We didn't think that it would become a worldwide tribute to Amy, you know what I mean? And I'm honoured. I can't say anything else. I'm just honoured knowing that, like, she was like, if she was here, innit, it would be fire to like, because I know that's someone that I would have probably made music with or just hung out with in general, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, 100%, 100%. And the thing is, is that when she was here, the remix packages of all of her tunes always had really, really, really good remixes. Mm -hmm. So you know at some point it would have happened. It would have been a Mastiempo, Amy, Amy Winehouse situation if she was still with it. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> that thing, Mass Tiempo. Like, it's been like a year. I can't believe it. It's been like a year, man. We've done so much. Like, played the closings in um, Ibiza. See, I'm even saying Ibiza now. I don't even say Ibiza. Because you've been around too many international DJs. <laughs> we're, we're, house, we're house DJs now. <laughs> <laughs> One too many fashion shows, one yeah. too many houses. Yeah. Like the Beezer, man. Nah, the Beezer. Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> we're playing the at closings. I like, pay Paradise to Jamie Jones. Yeah. That's nuts. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. We play, we um, closed the Shwire with Peggy. Um, we sold out drum shed. We headlined Glastonbury. I know! <laughs> You're telling me like I haven't been following and watching what's going Arcadia. on. Arcadia. Arcadia, the spider. Yeah. Yeah, it's we been spidered. Yeah. Yeah, we just been, like, and it's been a year, innit? And like, to be honest, I'm just happy for like because this is how I met Jammer, innit? I met Jammer in the basement. Like we yes. wasn't even we wasn't rappers. We weren't rapping, we weren't MCing. I met him in the basement, sounds, he was a producer, a DJ, I was a producer DJ. So initially when we even had the thought of, you know, going and doing this, like going on this journey, like for me and Jam, it's like, wow, like it's a blessing, man. This is serious, just a blessing. I'm just grateful. It's taking it all the way back to the essence. It's taking it all the way back to where you began. But you can't just say it was a basement because, Jamma, the basement at your parents' house is legendary. Yeah. The studio in the basement is where so many careers were born. For anyone that's listening to Capital Dance right now that doesn't know that story, I need to hear that story. Well, what the basement was to, to, to us. Yes. Um, it's a space where we could just all come, all connect, all create, feel free to be ourselves. It didn't matter what, what you know, your sound was like, as long as you was expressing yourself in your own way and you had your own identity, you know what I mean? And I feel like we've come full circle with that, with, like, again, going full circle back to DJ producing. Um, I feel like Mass Tiempo, not just as 
a label, but as a movement, is the same. You know, it's the same ethos mm. that the, that the basement had. Like I see that within it. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like we're just continuing what we've already done, but we're trying to do that on a bigger scale. Yeah. Times of fa- billion. So it's literally from from East London now to <laughs> Ibiza. <laughs> <laughs> To, to Fashion Week, <laughs> yeah, to shutting down Camden. Yeah, yeah. Let's not forget that one. Let's not forget about DJ on the top of a truck in Camden because that looked ridiculous. Yeah, man. Shouts out to Seb Chu, Paddy, put that yeah. together. Yeah. It was a yo-yo thing. That was a moment. That was a moment. Ooh. What was it like on the day though? Because these things, I've seen a few of them happen as a pop up, but. I suppose you're getting into the vehicle and not really knowing who's going to turn up, what the vibes are going to be like. They weren't allowing us to post until like te- like five to seven. Like it was at seven, isn't it? They're not they're like we're like, can we post now? Can we post now? They're like, no, wait, wait, hey, 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 hey. I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. So I just posted anyway. But I'm not gonna lie. I feel like sometimes when the energy's right and it's for the right reasons. It's just always every. It's just always gonna feel good in it, and mm-hmm. that day just felt amazing. It was the night of re- of the release. Um, it was in Camden, you know. Yeah, yeah, man. It was it was it was a good great moment. Even started to trickle with some rain at the end as well. It was like it was all mystical and that. Like yeah, it was. <laughs> some would even say those were the tears, and the tears dry on their own. Yeah. See, see, look. see what this. <laughs> So we chat about the Jab Hot, which is obviously Can't Play Myself a tribute to Amy. And I want to talk about the journey. You've touched on it briefly from Boy Better Know to Masti Empire. Now, Boy Better Know, absolutely, completely and utterly legendary in UK music. By far. There is very few collectives, very few crews that can lay claim to having the impact on British music that Boy Better Know had and continued to have. Are the, the plans from Mass Tiempo similar in the fact that it's it's not just a label, it's not just a production outfit, it's a movement, it's a clothing line, it's it's everything. It's like I said, it's it's all the the, the ethoses that we've had prior that worked for us, but then also then building on that and finding new things to add on and new ways to make it, you know, uh a, a, a new part of the journey you know what I mean so mm-hmm. there's even things that we must really haven't thought of yet that we're going to do you know, and we're already we're already planning like some things in the pipeline I don't know if we can say them but it happened and you know what I'm saying like you know you Skeps know, is just smiling at me yeah. like I don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah because I think me and Skep as well we're, we're we, we've you know we're both creators but we also we also have our own thought process on on things as well, which is like mm. kind of cool to work with someone that you always kind of can bounce off, and you you always have different ideas. You know what I mean? So I think that with me and Skep, like he might say something, or I might say something, and then it just expands into something else, which I think is like it's it's super cool because like even us, we don't know what the end result of it is, but we know yeah. the direction that we're going in, and we know how to build a brand and we know how to make something authentic and we know how to be true to ourselves. I think the thing is as well is that for me, knowing where you guys came from, knowing your history, it, and, and you you already alluded to it, Jammer, it's a full circle moment because where we all started, house and garage. Yeah, yeah. And now it's back to house. Yeah, because it's, it's kind of strange as well because a lot of people are like, oh, so, like, oh, yeah, like, how come you, you're doing house or, you know what I mean, which, like, I hear people asking but what what is kind of interesting is like even how gram got created it was there was a movement with garage but it, gram was a little bit left field so we didn't really get directly into that space and then that kind of was created from that which is also round about 130 to 140 bpm which is the same bpm and and house and garage they were brothers and sisters just like grime and dubstep were yeah. so this is something in electronic music that is a natural progression anyway and then naturally away from when we was rapping on, on the mic where we're going when we go to enjoy ourselves we're going to listen to a garage we're going to listen to house we're in we're in our b far we've been in iron apple we've been doing those nights you know we've been doing this in london we've been in cable street we've been you know what i'm saying so egg egg, egg. egg all the day <laughs> been to the dark side <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we've raved, we've yeah. raved. So, yeah, it's <clears throat> it was one of the things that the Martinez brothers said to me after when we, we first played Circo, the first show. 
Like there was like we didn't know what you were gonna play in it. We thought we didn't, and nobody knew, you know. But like from the clips that we've been seeing of you DJing, like we could tell that you've really raved in it, and it was. It was one of those moments where I was like, okay, cool. Like, this is gonna, the proof's gonna have to be in the pudding for this one. It's not me going online telling everyone, yeah, man, like, I used to DJ. Like, oh, I used to play house. I know these songs, innit? But it's just about me just doing it, man. And, you know, just like you wouldn't listen to the gamer on, the, on like, Call of Duty, you don't really take them seriously, innit? You can't really take, like, comments on things seriously about what you're doing, about what you love. You know what I mean? This is. I haven't, I haven't had so as much fun as this in music for so long. You know what I mean? Preach. Yeah, there's a there's a courtesy in house that that's really grown to me, and it's like where I where I like to be in my life. You know, so not to say that I'm not gonna rap again. I definitely would do that, but I just understand that there's a, another space mm. again for us to enjoy music. So you're talking about going raving. You're talking about you know the, the, your hour backbone in house music. Uh, who who are those DJ inspirations early for you that you, you were listening to that you maybe would, would go and see or that you Claude maybe got Stroke. takes of? Claude Von Stroke. Claude Von yeah. Stroke. Todd Edwards. Everything Dirty Bird. Todd, yeah. Todd the God. Carl Tough Enough Brown, even like them type of man I got like, you know, I've been inspired by a lot of different people, but that's what's really special, isn't it? Because I feel like the era the UK era of like garage that we live through of like even like before just before like house just before that like I don't think there's that many like producers that have that knowledge that are doing it you know what I mean that really like we're mixing like Rebound X RBX making house tunes with like Rebound X <laughs> Like rhythm and gash, like what do you we talking about? You know what I mean? Like people are coming to see, and I know initially people was like, you know, they're seeing our name on flyers, and it's like, oh, we can't. Is that are you gonna are you gonna are you gonna rap? Are you gonna you know what I'm saying? But I feel like by now they understand the difference if it's the flyer or the festival, yeah, and yeah. they're coming now and they're ex and it, and they're enjoying it, knowing that maybe they're not gonna rap, but they're gonna, you know, they're gonna make us feel welcome and familiar. And it's an evolution. That's the thing. It just feels it feels like the right thing to do at the right time. The yeah. vibrations are right. A lot of the shows that we've done, they they, they just put the mic next to the decks and the shows <laughs> and wasn't sure. Just in case. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> <laughs> you get your promoters coming to you going, um, is there any chance of just, you know, <laughs> I know you're here to play house, but <laughs> I kept I kept looking at the mic thinking they're they are they are going to understand soon and but Again, like, even at, you know, the only time I think we've even spoke on the mic is at the Amy tribute, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like having really, like, we've really made it made it clear and evident that this is this is not about us rapping, mm. you know what I mean? This is, this is about our skill as musicians and producers and DJ and, you know, people just that love sound and, and want to have a, a big input in sound design and the way the music is. The, 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 the direction of the music, you know what I mean? And I think that's what Mass Tempo is. It's, it has its own sound, you know, mm. it's a movement. It's it's about all the little things that we've experienced over time and kind of just taking that and putting our own spin on it in our own way, you know? And that's what Skep was saying. There's not a lot of people that have that knowledge of, you know, so like such a wide range of music, not even just in dance, but in reggae, in bashment, in soul, in rare groove, in hip-hop, and everything, you know what I mean? It's all the same root. It all yeah. comes from the same place. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you put it in the melting pot, then this is what you get out. Yeah. And bare young G's, yeah, think that they can't listen to house, isn't it? Like, but they're like, what's that? Like, but now what's through, that uns, uns? But what's if that, that uns, uns? If this is the nuance, if it's like Skep, like this is the reference point, boom. Like, Masti Ampo, who's that? Well, Skep and Jam. Yeah, I like, I like that. Cool. That's like a whole wave of people like that just try and might just try and listen to it, you know what I mean? Because you can't deny house music, like. You know what I mean? Doesn't matter what style of music you like, that like that that loop. If you like music, you like house. Mm. You just haven't realized it yet. Ooh. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> That's the name of the album. <laughs> 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 That's the name of the album. Yeah. No, but it's true as well. And it's also if you love something, the main thing, the, your main job is to shine light on it. Mm. You know, and I think that's, you know, something that we've enjoyed throughout our time and, you know, has brought us a lot of great times. We're going to be able to express that to people and, and give them a great time. You know what I'm saying? Even if they did come to see 
think they're coming to see something else, but you introduce them to that thing. That's 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 how I first heard uh, Garage. Really? My sister was just playing this tape, like, caught off in the run. I was thinking, what is that? Like, but then and she kept playing it, and I was like, actually, I just ended up nicking the tape. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then it goes from there. But it's like that's what it's about. It's about like if you love something, just introducing people to it. You know? Uh, uh, Skepta, what is this I've read about you looking for an actor, a young actor to play you? I think it was an easy thing for me to just say to play me, <laughs> to, because of the type of person that we wanted to play it. But it's not me. It's not. No, it's not like a, a movie. Uh, no, 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 no. You see, you got me excited. I thought there was going to finally be the Hollywood nah. version. Oh, no. When I do that, I ain't going to. I'm not. Like, the story's still going. It's crazy. <laughs> like, like I, when, see that when that happens, yeah. That movie. Like, mm. <laughs> 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 a mad movie still. But. So you were casting for something and you were the reference, a young version of you. Yeah, the exactly. That's, yeah. The, that's the way to put it. I was the reference. So, yeah. And we, we got some good people. So when the time is for the for the for the Hollywood movie, who is it that you're gonna place the call to play? I don't even know if I be should be even alive when that's made because I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm going to the last last bell. Yeah, but you're doing volume one. Come on, it's trilogy. Nah, man, I need it a one take, <laughs> <laughs> one shot, like 1917, <laughs> four hour film. Yeah, just like... <laughs> One take, you know. Yeah. <laughs> a one take. Can you imagine that? Yeah, that would be hard, though. Now, you mentioned briefly earlier on, we were talking about the live shows, and I'm, I'm sorry, the vibe that you bring to a live show is ridiculous. Drum sheds is happening. That, <laughs> I'm sorry, that looks like it's going to be the best party this year. 15 bags, 15,000 <laughs> people, Jam. Coming from Bastiempo. <laughs> no microphone in that place. No <laughs> microphone. No I'm sound engineer now. going, Hoo. I'm saying it now, there's no microphone in the building, so. But 15,000 people, bro. How does that feel? Because it's 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 home turf. It's it used yeah. to be in IKEA. It's yeah. it's in North London. Like, how does that feel knowing that that is going to be happening? I, that still hasn't, I haven't digested that properly yet, I'll be honest. I need a few more days, maybe a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, cause bare Just things 10 are minutes happening. before you hit. Because <laughs> bare things are happening, isn't it? Like, so it's, you're kind of only feeling it like when you get there. It's like when someone tells you to go on holiday and I'm like, well, me anyway, I'm like, oh, I hate the plane, I hate the airport, I have long face. As soon as I get to the hotel... And I land and I'm at the hotel, you see, I was kicked out. You know what I mean? I'm in yeah. now, but yeah. I can't see. You can't see 15,000 yeah, people in front of you. I can't, I can't. I'm too hyper-focused into right now. You, I'm looking at you, and as I'm saying, I'm dealing with this situation. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, every time I think about it, I just laugh because I'm like, wow, wow. I, we used to do rap shows like... 10,000 and think to ourselves, like, wow, we should, what can we do, do to sell the tickets? Like... This is 15k, no mic. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's about to be a moment. That's album two, 15k, no mic. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's interesting what you're saying as well about the energy, like because of the background of like showbiz that we come from, and like the, the energeticness of like just grime in general. When when we're playing music and we're we're mixing tunes and we're bringing it in, it's just a different thing. Do you know what I mean? And I think that kind of stands out a lot in when we're doing our, you know, and our, our nights. And I like, I really like, I'm focused on really like making that like a display as well, because I think that's something that we can also bring into this space that we're working, you know? Energy. Yeah. Energy. It's the right energy. It's the right vibration. The jamming gets the lasso out. <laughs> I've seen this. We were <laughs> I've seen this on such a show. It's mad. I can't believe... Hey, we was thinking for... <laughs> we was thinking for, for, like, what like what is he doing? Like, when the tune drops, what is that thing that he's doing? Someone said, last you, I couldn't breathe. I was, <laughs> I was laughing so long that I finally realised he was on a horse <laughs> with a lasso in his mind when the tune was dropping. What a nutter. No, but listen, the tune, when it hits you like that, if you have to get on your horse yeah. and wave your lasso in the yes, air, man. go. <laughs> the lasso, that's what they call the dance. <laughs> There's no bike, so what else are you going to do? Let's yeah, do it. Yeah, 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 nah, real talk, man. Let's do it, man. You know, that, jam that, is that, always going to be jam. That one there, that bus is tunes. Yeah. That one, you do that at the right 
moment, that tune's gone. Oh, so, so he's taking the credit for the Amy tune. No, nah, not even. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Ooh. Nah. Not even, so not even that the one. Lasso. I was doing that in beams from been. from early. Nah, I was doing it in beams from early, but <laughs> I'm gonna leave that Enough one there. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Another tune uh, that you guys made that we, we've been heavily supporting on this station, Touching My Body, yeah. with Etta Bond. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about this tune. How did this one come about? Uh, I think you pulled up with the vocal, right? Yeah. So we was in studio working on the Coco launch. So for the Coco launch, we're just working on loads of records for that, for the launch. For the specific launch party. But yeah, yeah, exactly. That's when we was working on the Amy record at the same time. Like, So we've been in studio for like a month. But um, Skep had the uh, vocal and he, he he just pulled up with it. You know what I mean? And I think did you have a did you have like a? a I feel, I'm not sure if she's recorded it before, but she sent it to me. I said to her, "Look, like we're making house tunes in it, so if you have any vocals, we could you know see what we could do." And she sent she sent that one. She was like, "I think this will be good on a house tune in it." So yeah, we just we just got to it. I didn't know. I don't think we knew that it was going to be like a soulful mood like that when we started it was just making and that's how it came out in it but um it's funny because even when you were saying should we talk about i knew he's going to say touching my body it's crazy that tune is a like it's a, it's a sneaky one it's a creeper yeah 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 it's a sneaky one and and i feel like it's it's going to be it's got i like those ones because they just it's a slow burn longer burner in it <clears throat> It's it reminds of me of like a fish go deep cure in the cause or like a, a Dennis Ferrer hey hey. It reminds me of when it's just a deep and soulful record that for some reason you can't stay still to. Yeah. You have to pull out the lasso. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're on bad today, John. Still. Nah, you're on bad, you're on bad still. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> right, what I am going to say is I'm, I'm it's been a very, very long time since I've seen the pair of you. Mm -hmm. Please can we make sure that it's nowhere near as long since I see you again? 100%, but we had to do that, That what was happening in that gap there. Because I remember I even shouted you one time to, I was dropping them in, you're like, yo, Jam, I'm, I'm on the other side of the mountain, you know. <laughs> um, like, my thing right now, I don't know, it's not connecting with, like... What you're trying to Yeah, do. so I just had to walk back off with my... The core rap tune, <laughs> going to our corner. Come but, back with the house. Yeah, but now man's land we've arrived. Do you get me? We're in the house. You get what I'm saying? So Well, you're always welcome at Capital Dance. Thank yes. You. Yes. One hundred percent always welcome. And I'm just really, really excited to see what happens next with Mass Tiempo because I know you're not gonna tell me on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it will be like that's what I said, Jamma said it perfectly. Like it's like everything everything that you've seen us do before with every other brand that we've done, like that and more stuff that we ain't even seen because Mastiempo is like like a bilingual brand for us. Like it doesn't stop anywhere. It keeps going. Like we're getting bookings in places that we've never been even as rap. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. like it's, we're just taking it there. You know what I mean? It's, it's beyond it's beyond us. It's bigger than us. And more than anything, I'm just really, really happy that, you know, more people are really understanding the universal power of dance music. Yeah. It can 100%. take us everywhere. 100%. And everybody's welcome. Yeah, and make some noise for yourself, Jam, as well. Yeah. You get me? Well, I'm trying. We're building, we're building, yeah. we're building. Oh.